Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to check the ET-125 V2 quadcopter from LDARC. In this video, I'm going to go over its features, show you how to set it up, and then head outdoors and test it out. Just like most of the quadcopters from LDARC, the ET-125 V2 comes inside this pretty nice plastic suitcase. It is available both as a plug and play version which doesn't come with any receiver and you can get a bind and fly version which comes with either Futaba, Spectrum, FlySky or FLSky compatible receivers. In addition it has two similar versions, the ET-115 3S and the ET-100 V2. Inside the box we can find the quadcopter, two extra black and red canopies and also the original canopy from the V1. The difference between the canopies except the design is that the angle of the camera on the V1 is 15 degrees and the angle of the camera in the newer canopy is 30 degrees. Next we can find a bag with two sets of extra 2840 propellers, two rubber bands for mounting the battery and also some extra screws for the propellers. You also get in the instructions manual both in English and Chinese for the three available variants and the instructions manual for your receiver. I've got the AC900 version which is compatible with both Efrosky and Futaba transmitters. Finally you'll get in a sheet of stickers that will help you to decorate the quadcopter and a 2S 550mAh LiPo battery which is rebranded by LDRC but is made by GNB. The first thing you notice about the ET125 V2 is that it pretty much looks like an oversized whoop. Here you can see how it looks next to the LDRC GT8 and the Gepper C Phoenix 3 and it kind of looks like a combination of both. In terms of components, the ET125 V2 is using 1104 rebranded Sunny Sky 7500kV motors. These motors can handle LiPo batteries between 2 to 3 cells, however because they are pushing 2.8 inch propellers, you can use this quadcopter only with 2S LiPo batteries. On the center of the quadcopter we can find a 4-in-1 12 ampere BLLES ESC, on top of it, an F3 Omnibus flight controller, which comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.1.7 and I highly advise you to update it. On the top of the flight controller, we can find the receiver, of course, if you got the Binafly version, and on the bottom, the VTX, which supports 16 channels, and by default, its output strength is 100 millivolts. And if you'd like, you can set it to 25 millivolt by just disconnecting the VTX, and then you will need to unbridge the two solder pads, which are located on top of it. Finally, on the front of the quadcopter, we can find an 800 TV line CMOS camera with a field of view of 150 degrees. As for the design of the frame, the ET125 V2 is using a carbon fiber bottom plate with a thickness of 2.5 mm. This is a unibody bottom plate, which means that if you're going to break an arm, you're going to need to replace the entire bottom plate. In addition, this is a true X frame with a wheelbase of 125 mm. The weight of the quadcopter without the battery is just over 100 grams, which is actually not that heavy considering it has pretty big propeller protectors. The weight including the included battery is 134.6 grams. In order to bind the Efrosky version, you will need to power up the quadcopter while pressing the bind button which is located on the top of the receiver. It is easier to do it after removing the canopy, which is secured using these three screws over here. However, if you'd like, you can access it from this hole over here. After that, on your FSKI transmitter, put the mod on D16 and hit bind. The VTX is located on the bottom of the quadcopter. Unfortunately, it does not support smart audio, so in order to switch between the 16 available frequencies, you will need to short press this button. After powering up the quadcopter, the frequency is going to be indicated by this LED. So you can see the first color is blue and then green. And on the frequency table on the user manual, you can see that it is set to 5740. So again, the first color is the left one, and then the second one is the right. And you can short press the button of the VTX in order to cycle between all these options. The next thing I'm going to do is to update the flight controller to the latest beta flight version. Then I'm going to go over the beta flight configuration and head outdoors and test it out. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video, and I will see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
So overall, after testing the ET125 V2, I can tell you that this is a great option for a beginner who is looking for his first FPV racing quadcopter. The reason for that is that first of all it features a very protective design. Both the canopy on top and the enormous protector for the propellers are going to make sure that even though that you're going to crash the quadcopter, which you are obviously going to do, the quadcopter is still not going to break easily. On the other side, even though it features this protective design, it's still pretty agile and fun to fly. In terms of flight time, you can expect between 2.5 to 3 minutes using the included 550 mAh 2S battery. So of course you're going to need to get more batteries. And one of the things I noticed is that after plugging in the battery, the voltage dropped really fast and a potential fix could be to replace the JST connector with an XT30 connector and I might give it a try, and if it's going to help, I'm going to let you know. In addition, as you advance, you can also remove the propeller guards, which is going to make the quadcopter lighter, more agile, and it is also going to extend the flight time. In terms of range, I got to around 300 meters, which is pretty impressive, and you're going to be pretty much limited by the VTX and not by the receiver, at least in the FR Sky version. Now I'm going to test the quadcopter again without the propeller guards and also after replacing the exit 30 connector and if the result is going to be satisfying I'm going to post another video. 
As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the ET125 V2, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.